So good evening, everyone. It being 530 and there being here a quorum of the board of the Northampton Housing Authority, I'll call this meeting to order. And I'll ask, please, the secretary to call the roll. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Chairperson Carney. Present. Uh, Chair Vice Chairperson Richards. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Here. Thank you. Madam Chair, all present. Very good. Thank you. Okay, everyone is here. And as is our usual uh, practice, we'll open with our period of uh, public comment, which includes first resident comment, followed by staff comment, followed by public comment. And Jack, I'll let you go ahead and facilitate that. You have my, it's fine to move from one right into the next. Okay, thank you so much. So the first person on my list who has the ability to unmute themselves um, is uh, Mr. Kierdorf. Can you just remind us what um, development you're coming from? Uh, yeah, I'm, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Doug Kierdorf. I'm a tenant at Four Sander. And um, I'm here today doing my civic duty to uh, uh, take part in democracy. And today is uh, being the first meeting of the, of the uh, board during the new uh, fiscal year, which started on Ju July the 1st. I just phoned, uh, phoned up. I just checked in to remind you that uh, part of the, the budget for this fiscal year is to replace all of the exhaust fans at Four Sander, or so I have been led to believe. So I wanted to know, first of all, is it possible to see this budget? And it should be a public document, I guess. Secondly, can I know that it, the protocol is not to actually discuss this stuff now and answer tenant questions, but um, uh, an, and an answer would be appreciated. And uh, if somebody could uh, just briefly outline what the plan is and the timetable for doing this work. I will uh, also like to remind you that the current exhaust systems in the building are 58 years old. In three of the buildings, they're not working at all. People have mold growing on their towels and in their bathroom. And this is really, I, you know, I don't blame the current board for this. I think this is the result of many years of ne neglecting normal maintenance and, um, and investment. And um, I would also respectfully like to remind the board that they are currently in violation of the Massachusetts State Sanitary Code. So I would also like to just know, uh, I mean, apart from what Director Leeper says, what the rest of the commissioners feel about this. Thanks very much. I will now mute myself again. Thank you, Mr. Kierdorf. Um, just so you know, well, as you know, we can't engage in this now, but you will get certainly a reply um, as soon as possible to that question. And it's not something that um, is on an agenda or would be, but I would hope that the uh, answer, because we have discussed this item for a while, I hope that um, the answer that you get will suffice. So I'll go on then to Jack, you can ask the next person. Please. Sure. So the, the next group of folks on my list is the Walter Salvo LTO. And I know you guys are there and I believe you can hear us. I just need one of you to unmute so that we can go through. If everyone can just say their unit number before they speak. Is this Salvo building? So right now there's one actually called Walter Salvo. I'll get to you, sir, as soon as they finish, okay? Okay, I am Edwin. Okay, Edwin, thank you. That's too bad. <laughs> 
Go ahead. All right, we can hear you. Okay, hi, I'm Al Shagnon, president of Walter Salvo Tenants Association. Um, I just like to uh, say it's been a while since we got hooked up here on the big screen. Um, hopefully, we'll get situated um, in the future to get better accommodation for our, our big screen. Uh, the AC is a problem in the community room right now. So we're in an apartment that is vacant. We have a few people here. We would like to see a lot more, but at this time, we'll do what we got. Um, been working in the community gardens, uh, keeping it up, you know, making it look nice for everybody to enjoy the flowers out front. The gardens out back, people are enjoying their garden space. You get to see people come out. That's a big thing in this building. You got 192 units and nobody comes outside because they're scared. But uh, hopefully we can correct that one day soon. Um, I do have other people that would like to speak, so I will pass it on. And I'd like to say I did have a good meeting with Jack and our board members on the 8th, uh, hopefully we'll have our office uh, on the 23rd. Long time overdue, but we are taking out pretty good with the LTO. We got a needle exchange program we got going, but we have no place to keep them until we get our office um, and other things that are going. People in the community are coming to the LTO for answers that they don't want to go to housing for. So that's things we'll bring up with housing. And um, I think it will be a great uh, relationship as we go on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chagnon. Uh, yeah, uh, John Wyda, I'm Ben DeSalvo, Apartment Floor 20. Uh, I have two things I have to bring up. First of all, the park parking permits. It, uh, a few months ago, housing went uh, ballistic. Oh, you have to do this, you got to do that, you got to do that to get a permit. Now, I want to know, is the permit, uh, do we need one at uh, Salvo? Is it dropped or what? Because the people are going down and they're saying, oh, we don't have the stickers. And then I asked about the magazine for six months, you had it in there and you didn't give a, a definite finish date. If I, you have to have it done by such and such a time or you will be towed. After I said that, it was dropped from the magazine. It hasn't been in a magazine for the last uh, three months. So I want to know, is a parking permit ready and able, willing to go, or are you dropping the whole program? If you start a program, please finish it, and you haven't done it. <laughs> and the second thing is speed bumps. Uh, we need speed bumps here at, uh, before somebody gets hurt or killed. And uh, I know if somebody gets hurt or somebody gets injured, you'll have the speed bumps in the next day. Uh, throughout the whole city, even going to the hospital, there are speed bumps. And I've been told, oh, we were told that we can't have speed bumps because of the fire department. I checked with the fire department. They said, no, there's no regulations. They're, 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 all, they're all over the city. So are they going to put speed bumps in? Yes or no? I would like to have the committee uh, make a commitment. Next. There, my name is Don Moran. I'm Mr. 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 I live in Lyme. Yeah, you're next. Yeah, I'll stay here for number. No. Oh, that's the board we're going. Yeah, that's the order. Where's the sign that says we go around the room? Go, go for it. It's popping right upside your head. You hit me inside the head. You would be never. Well, he started. How do My name is David Edwards, vice president of LTO. LTO. And um, Angela has been working very diligently to identify unsavory characters in the building yeah. that are still here after months of her reporting them. And I would not have to wait till people OD and people get shot to remove these people. I would appreciate it if you would listen to her and take action on the information that she has given you. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Is it my turn? Yes, go no, thank yes. you very much. Hello, everybody. My name is Donna Moran. And I live in a uh, Walton Salva House in apartment 414. Yeah. Huh? This, this issue. Okay, John. This issue is more of a personal thing, although it could affect uh, some of the other residents in the building. 
this past weekend, my electricity uh, blew out um, in my apartment. I just got home Friday from um, the uh, nursing home. I was in a nursing home total uh, with being in the hospital and, and at Philly Dick plus Boston um, for a month and two days. And all of a sudden I was sitting there and, um, in my quiet little chair that I like to call my cat. And um, all of a sudden I heard a popping sound. Um, I, I could not identify all I know. My TV went out, everything went out, including the air conditioning. Well, I went into the to the room or the uh, breaker room and I attempted to turn the uh, breakers on, but make a long story short, I called the maintenance department, which I did, lived here almost 30 years. And we had a, had a very organized, on the weekend, you call up and you explain your situation. It's either an emergency or not an emergency. If it's not an emergency, I have to wait. But this I considered an emergency. And I was getting very sick. It was very humid in my apartment. So I connected with somebody and um, they said, you have to call the power company. I said, ma'am, I have never called the power company. This is something for the housing authority. No, our orders is to call the power company. So can you please explain to me what, what the procedure is? Thank God, uh, another resident and I ran to the person for maintenance that's on call. And it, I, met, I, I think it was meant to happen because this was later in the day. I called at 8 o'clock in the morning, again at 10.30, and you got the same story. Okay, so then I had to go out. I went, went and did a little grocery shopping and came back. And, um, you know, nothing really took place until this maintenance fellow who was on call for the weekend, we ran into him and he said to me, Dad, did you call the, the maintenance line? And I said, yes, I did. And then um, it, it went from there. So I really don't think that, that we have to go through all that, that malarkey. There should be a system like it used to be. And and I, um, you know, I'm sorry I had to go through it and I hope nobody else has to go through it either. So can you please explain what the procedure is? I know what the procedure is, but it wasn't it wasn't being followed the way the normal procedure was. Anything thank else? you. Yes, thank you. Thank Hello. you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is Angela in Santanello at the Walter Salvo. And first of all, we want to welcome Kara back because she's been out sick and we're glad to see her back. So I hope everything's going well for her. Um, and also, um, we did, we have reported quite a bit um, recently on people that are not supposed to be in the building. We're trying to get some um, trespasses against a few people if we need to. Um, also need to follow up and see where we're at on um, the discussion that Kara and I had with Kathy Caputo. So I don't know if that's something we can look into as well. Um, but all in all, um, the neighborhood watch, everybody in the building is pretty much a part of the neighborhood watch as long as they're watching out for others. And um, we're trying to get most everybody involved with that and continue to work with that. So it's, everything's going okay. We just need um, just a little more help from NHA on some of the trespasses that we have going on. We did have to have a, an individual arrested recently. Um, she was escorted off of the property, but she had been banned from all of the NHA properties. So it was actually, um, it actually worked out the way it was supposed to. Hopefully we can continue that process. Um, because we've all we've had a very good working relationship with NHA this, this whole time, so hopefully we'll be able to continue that. And I'm going to let someone else take it. Can y'all hear us okay? Because this is our new system that we're using for the first time, and we want to make sure that everybody can hear everything okay. So if you can let us know, Chairperson um, Carney, that would appreciate it. Yeah, it looks great. And thank you for your comments, uh, Angela. It looks great, and I really appreciate that we have the ability to act to focus in on folks as they speak. So thank you all for coming and speaking. And I know there's more, there's at least half a dozen more folks. So please. Okay. You can talk from there, the camera will go to and right directly to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Ricky Peterson. I live in Salvo 518. And I have two things that I'd like to mention. One, 
is um, I've been advocating for the carpets to be cleaned. They haven't been cleaned for three years. There's dog piss, there's human piss in the carpets, and they're stained badly. And I don't understand why they haven't been cleaned. Um, it's uh, yeah. it, it, it's beyond me, you know, uh, why they haven't been cleaned. Can you tell me if there is a uh, um, a um, a cleaning going to happen soon, um, within the next month or so. Okay. And the second thing is, um, we don't have nothing without air conditioning in the um, uh, in the community room now for, for a year. And I don't understand why it hasn't been fixed. Um, we got these mini splits, which are wonderful, except when it comes to maintenance, about uh, six months to a year from now, it's going to be very expensive to to, uh, to um, maintain these things, to clean them. We don't have people here who have enough knowledge for maintenance to clean these things. They need a specific cleaning because the, the filters at the top are just for bugs, basically. They don't filter out dust. So dust is going to get in there, uh, especially now, that we're using the air conditioning, uh, it's going to, the dust is going to uh, 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 attach itself to the uh, rotors, which uh, give us the fans, uh, uh, and uh, and eventually it'll be mildew if they're not cleaned right. And that will be a real problem, okay? So I know these mini splits, and I know heat pumps, I've worked with them for the past 25, 30 years. So I know the maintenance that's required for these things. And, and so far, uh, nobody has an idea about that. Uh, uh, thank you. As you know, we can't really give your answers to your questions right now, but just be assured that folks are taking note of each of these concerns and you will have a response back from management as soon as possible. I okay, can I say can I say something? Um, I, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> I'm so sorry. There's a group that's before you. As soon as we're finished with the group that's in the room, then we'll go to you, uh, Edwin. Is that okay? Thank you. Thank you. Um, my niece is going to come to the most of 627. Um, I would like to bring up the fact that um, I was told by one of the workers in the office here at Walt Sabo that um, the reason why there is no air conditioning in the hallways here at Walt Sabo is that um, it was shut down by the fire department. And then I questioned the fire department personally, and they said they had nothing to do with it. And so, and it's been like breaking, well, it's been, it's been over a year since we've had air conditioning in the hallways. And when I first moved into Walter Sabo 18 years ago, we had the air conditioning in the hallways. And I was uh, very comfortable. And I do have had my COPD and the whole nine yards. And I've been unable to leave my apartment as often as I would like. But I was So I was wondering if like, well, that's, if there's any way we can um, get the air conditioners up and running in the dining room, the TV room, and the hallways to make it more comfortable here at Walter Sabo for the tenants and the workers. Maybe. Because 
anything else. Sam, Thank you, you for your comment. I just want to say that um, we'll get back to you on this very important issue as soon as possible. Yeah. Sandra, do you have anything? No, I'm not right now. Heidi, do you have anything? That would be all of us here. You can go to Edwin. Thank you so Thank you. much, folks, for getting together in that room. And I'm so glad that we have that screen working and camera. Jack, I'll let you go ahead and uh, bring on Mr. Edwin. Yep. The next person would be Edwin. Hi. My name is Edwin. I live in Salvo Building, apartment 706. And I heard Angela, and I heard Al, and I heard Mike talking about the union and the situation in the building, okay? Now, let me say this. I was a security officer for five years as a captain, okay? For 2,015 people, I mean, 2,500 people in a factory. Security is something that I know a lot about, okay? I have been a, I have been a, a, a case worker. I have been a, a community leader for, I mean, all my life. I am 70 years old. I practice karate, I do yoga. I am a very happy person. I practice guitar, I play guitar, I sing and I play piano, okay? So I am, a, I, I am saying this, not for you to you know, give me a prize or whatever, for, for you to know me, that I feel that I am a happy, normal person, okay? And I love people. I love this building, I love it. Not only a structural, because I am a, I am a carpenter, I am a builder, okay? I can build a house from scratch. So I live in a castle, and I know that as a fact, okay? Not only that, we have a great, beautiful community. From 192 apartments, we have few issues, but we don't have problems enough to be scared or living in, you know, but there are issues. There are issues. Right now, I am trying to deal with this guy, with this kid who lives in the building. Memphis is his last name, I believe. He's around 30, 30 something years old. He is dirty. He doesn't take showers. I gave him shirts. I have brought pants, underwear, shoes, shirts. He doesn't, he doesn't want to deal with it. He's dirty, dirty, dirty. The shirt that he's using right now, I gave it to him a month ago. And he's, he used it day and night. I mean, I saw him the other day and I wanted to tell him, get that shirt off your body because I'm going to throw it away. I have another one here. He was yelling at me. I don't want anything from you. Blah, 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 Now. This is the point. I, I live in the seventh floor. I, he doesn't bother me. I don't have to deal with him for nothing. For, I, by the way, I don't have to deal with anybody in the building and I will be happy. But I live in the building and I am a social person. So I do like to say good morning, hi, or blah, 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 and be in communication. You know, I love it. Okay. So I, I, that, that I am not going to give away. But this kid is so dirty that I am scared. This kid should, can bring germs and infections, any kind of sickness into our elevators. And we are going to get sick. This kid can kill people in this building right now. I am 70 years old. He is 30 something. He doesn't take showers. I, I would like, and I went to the Department of Health this morning, this morning, accusing the, the, the housing department, Jose Cruz and Cara, to know about this situation and not doing anything about it. And this is a health department situation. They call the police. The police cannot deal with a crazy, mental, ill, emotionally ill person. You got to deal with the psychiatric hospital. You have to deal with, you have to put this kid in a safe place. And Mr. Velez, you have oh. Mr. Velez, you have 30 more seconds. 
Okay. That's all I have to say. This kid should be out of this building in a safe place. And this kid is threatening our health. Everybody in the building, including me, and I want him out of this place because that's where he belongs, in a safe place, in a hospital, by the way, in a mental hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Velez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Edwin. Okay, Thank you. the next individual that we have on the list um, is a phone number that ends with 1863. Feel free to unmute yourself if you would like. Um, while we wait, the next person, the last name is Silkwolf, I believe. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. No, you got it correct. Um, you are next. Um, uh, if you just let us know if you're a resident or a member of the public, please. I am a resident of the Walter Savo House. My name is Alexio Silkwolf. I'm at uh, Savo 212. I had uh, been inquiring about adding more trees to the uh, side of Sava House uh, to the left of the building because we had a few trees that were taken down due to uh, disease or rot, as I had heard. Uh, I was because I wanted to add uh, the tr trees as a replacement to the old trees that was taken down as it helped cool the building down and added color to the building. My next um, question was if there's any way we can come up with some solutions about the littering that's being done in the parking lot because myself and others uh, attempt to pick up the litter and trash that visitors leave behind or the dumpster picker upper tends to leave behind. I'm looking to volunteer if, if that's what you need, um, but if we can add signs or something to help deter the amount of littering that's been going on because that has affected the public community garden in the building. The trash has made its way to the garden, so that's not exactly a desirable to have trash mingling with food. I would greatly appreciate someone get back to me again. Yeah, apartment 212 at the Savo House. I'm done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Groff. Good job. I am with you. Thank you. The, the next person on my list um, is Jojo S. Can you let us know if you're a resident or a, a member of the public and if you would like to speak today? Okay, um, after that, I have KC. Yeah, hi, it's KC 201 McDonald. Uh, it's gonna be a hard act to follow those Salvo people are head up. That means heated up in Southern. Now I'm going to take two words today that I just grabbed from this meeting so far. Start with a C. Y'all may or may not remember I've done the A and B. Anyway, cooperation and complacency. You guys should be thanking these people that are interested. You can incentivize people cleaning up the parking lot or whatever. Rewards, yes, rewards. Good behavior, more rewards. Another thing, I'm curious, there's still a pretty intense drug scene going on in the building and people that we don't want here come in. We have to call the police every time. I've asked for a police report. I haven't gotten it. The um, authority has asked for it, so I'm still waiting on that. I just, I'm not a detective, but I'm interested to see how many times I have to call the police. It's ridiculous to me. And planting trees is a wonderful idea. Fruit trees that can feed people's shade. Um, and the mold. Y'all had a an inspection and they and I knew there was mold apparently the guy who was inspected didn't realize there was mold because once he did he recognized that it was a lot of mold and, and the worst thing to me is walking into the apartment and smelling it I mean it's it's pretty intense and that's at McDonald and it it, it could be worse somewhere else but also another thing there's a pretty big uh, problem with I, I hear this from the Latinx community that there is rampant racism on the part of NHA. That y'all don't like people of brown skin. And I don't know that because we don't hang out in the building here. It's very uncomfortable. People, like the guy said, people don't bathe. People are mean to each other. So, we, you know, loneliness, y'all, it's a big epidemic now. I think addressing that being proactive on something like that could really help. 
And to do that, we're going to need a little cooperation. Otherwise, we're just going to seem complacent. So I've used my words, and that's about all I have to say. And by the way, as far as I know, it's not against the law not to bathe because we've run into this problem, a place I used to work as an activities person. People cannot bathe as long as they want. So, unfortunately. But anyway, it does, it does mess up the elevators, and they always smell like someone's sick in them or something. And, yeah, I just wish let's get some things on the ball if we can. I appreciate it. And it's hot, 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 and it's climate change, and it's hot in this apartment. They put an AC in, and it doesn't work, and there's mold. And, yeah, let's, let's take care of it, okay? Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Ms. Thank Chapman. You. The next person on my screen is Joella. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I had my... Um... My electronic hand raise, I don't know if you saw it, but hi, uh, everyone. I'm also known as Jada. And I, I echo the comments to seeing Walter Savo, I call them the troops, the L, L local troop organization there uh, together and being heard. I think it's really uh, pretty wonderful. Actually, they said a whole many things that I would like to have uh, brought up. One of the things though, um, and I mentioned this because of being a personally involved with it, is the, I call it the NASCAR, <laughs> the NASCAR <laughs> racing in the on the property, but I have to tell you, it extends to Senior Center and even on Frew Street. And uh, on, uh, as I said last time, one person was speeding was the staff person. And I have to admit, I've even seen, and I think some people in that room there will admit to seeing some volunteers that work in the um, kitchen area who they bring food. They've been speeding. Um, I almost got hit. You're carrying groceries because you can't bring them to the front door, so we have to go here. And, you know, just the other day I was going somewhere and I saw this sign that said children. Just that's it. And children would mean that you need to be careful when you're driving. We don't have speed bumps. We don't have uh, signs to say go slow. Elderly people, heart, people issues with hearing and people who have some mobility issues. And that's necessary. And I think that because it is with Prue Street and is with Senior Center, I've been talking with some of people and maybe bringing this also uh, issue with the ward three, but it should be caution that there are people who are living here. Um, and uh, cause I, we don't want an accident. Actually, I had my car totaled <laughs> and I wasn't in it. So it is a problem. And I know I've brought it up a couple of times. And secondly, I do think that it is a concern um, with the drug issues that are here. Some of us can be hidden in our apartment all day when it's hot, you know, you hide in your apartment pretty much. And uh, I do hear about it. I can't say that I specifically have seen anything, but I do. I do hear. And I have to tell you, it's the usual suspects. And I don't know what has happened. People have said again, this person is living with this person. And then she also goes and live with another person. And then they go here. So it's still a problem. And um you know, I, I do see the sentiments where people are like, get them out of here, get them out of here. You know, that's not always the case. I would rather than get some help, but it is a problem. And I'd like for this to be dealt with all the time, not when publicity is around so we can look like we're doing something. We have to deal with this problem from the ground up. Uh, you know, are there meetings? There used to be meetings here all the time. Are there other meetings? I mean, just something to try to help folks. And then secondly, maybe along those lines, I think we should revisit having... Um, security at the front door. As I've told people many times, I worked at Mount Holyoke College and work study students staffed, I wouldn't dare say man the uh, front door, but I think that there's, I think it's easier if it's not residents because we have known there have been some residents who've gotten physically attacked actually. Uh, and then some people don't feel comfortable with some of the people here trying to police uh, the building. I don't really care who and how and why, but we need that. And I think that's something we should do for this building and maybe all the buildings. And I also just wanna to touch on the fact that I think these uh, mini splits are the bomb, meaning great, great. I can't tell you how great they are. The thing is I was at a conference and I did see them cleaning it. So I was really paying attention to that. And I do think that that's something we should be thinking of before it happens. But I have to tell you the minute I open my door, the heat, because the vents aren't open, it's stifling. And that's just trying to get from the, can you imagine from your door to go to the elevator, you're drenching with sweat and they open it. Sometimes we've heard stuff Oh, the fire department and the fire department, they opened it last year. And then the community room and the TV room, it's hot. I mean, luckily I can go back into my apartment. Well, what about the workers that are there? There are workers who are with the Highland elder services who bring food to the people who can't go get their food. They're sweating like crazy. 
And I think we need to care, care about our residents, care about our people, care about our community. And that's something that needs to be happening. Uh, really, that needs to be happening. You need to show it, not say it kind of thing. Because I see on the newsletter, we say, we love everybody. We love everybody. Let's, I, I don't doubt that, but I'd like to see some of that love. And so that's pretty much all that I have to say. Again, I'm really impressed with the people who have come out to speak. That's good. One other problem is that, and we can check this later on, is that on the a city site, Northampton, this agenda wasn't there. Uh, June was. So I get a lot of phone calls or texts. Can you give me the link? I'm not the secretary, unless I get paid for it, please. I think you should have that available to everyone. And I do know one guy in particular, I'm not going to say his name. He really wanted to be here. But if I send him a link, he doesn't know how to use the computer. He doesn't know how to use his fingers to do that. We need to help those who are here who don't always, because I can do it like that. I looked it up. I found it, blah, blah, blah. But not everybody is at the same level. And the person isn't here because they're in medical care to go down to a meeting. And these are the people who want to be involved and have things to say. So I think that we should really think about that. And overall, uh, I do want to thank people for getting the notices up this term. I did see it this month. I saw notices up. Uh, and I just saw a notice. You, know, you have up. 10 seconds left. Well, now I got five more. But I did see a notice up that said the meeting in 401 or whatever. That just happened. I just happened to go outside looking for that. So it would be nice to get these things a little timely. And on some of the meetings, it was larger print. And thank you for that. But it did start getting smaller print, and it should be on all the floors here. So good work, guys. Thank you, you. Mr. Tarbutton. The next person is um, Gina Bod. Yes, hello. My name is Gwen Nabod, and um, I wanted to speak out um, because, um, well, a couple of things. One is I'm curious to know how the housing bond bill is going to shake out with some of the remediation in the basements at Hampshire Heights, as well as the windows. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and then there was something else. Um, well, I guess that's really it for now. I, I wish I, if I think of it, I could maybe raise my hand in another second, but, um, that's one thing that I, I do have concerns about is, is the mold in the windows um, at Hampshire Heights, as well as, um, I, I think that's it for now. Thank you, sorry about that. That's Thank all you, right. Bob. Thank uh, you, Ms. Nabot. I just wanna point out that we can't really um, um, go back. However, you know that you can reach out to, to administration, to management here, and we'll give you answers to the extent that we know them. And um, certainly, you know, uh, thank you for coming. The okay, next person you. on my list is Yasiri Castillo. Um, shit. Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Can Castillo. you hear? Can yes, you hear we can, me? We can hear you. Yes, we just. Oh, I thought you were being here. <laughs> Sorry yeah, about we it. We can hear you fine. Okay, I just want to say, like, a lot of it's, it's, it's a lot of issues. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of drug issues over there. But I just want to remind you people, like, how hard it is to deal with addiction and and all that stuff. And not everybody take the time for, like, reach out who not can boxes in the building or oh, oh, do all that that takes time money and dedication and a lot of people complaining about the drug thing but everybody should be take their five minutes ten minutes and educate themselves like housing can do everything we have to be realistic it, 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 we we're a lot with a lot of residents with a lot of buildings it's, it's a lot of ways to find out how the Narcan wor works, and it's a lot of ways to help. And we just have to remember, it, 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 it's a lot of stuff to do for, for like, we're like, how many residents are we, how many employees are there? So we just have to be grateful and patient, I, I think, and remember, like, 
be grateful for like what we got right now because I know it's another housing authorities that I way way worse than ours and they don't even have a Narcan there. So that's all what I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Castillo. Okay. Thank you. And then um, we are going to now go to staff comment. It looks like all of our residents have finished. Seeing no staff comment, it appears that- I remember, oh. I remember before you move on. Chair, yeah, that's can I okay. go yeah, back to Gwen? Yeah, it's, it's fine, uh, Gwen, because I think you were speaking under resident comment. So not that you get a double dip, but we'll just <laughs> reserve the, the rest of your time for your public comment, please. Thank you so much because um, Jack just reminded me when he said resident comment, I thought there was going to be an end to identifying people as residents because in fact, residents are members of the public. And so that is what I want to mention tonight. Thank you. Thank you for and that. We're, we're working on it. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Um, and then there is one person um, from the public, um, Mr. Halberstadt. I always mess up your name. Uh, Jerry, would you like to make a comment this evening? Oh, we can't actually hear you. You want to try muting, just very muting low. one more time? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Now we can. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you for for your hospitality. And uh, I just want to say, uh, listening to the comments from the tenants, um, I think it's very constructive um, that people are willing to speak out on their concerns and issues uh problems that they they see whether they're um small or big but i think if the board and management can hear those comments and use them towards a constructive end um it, it'll be a great improvement because you look at companies that fail like boeing with airplanes falling out of the sky um, when you suppress the problem, they come around and bite you. So I, it, it sometimes, I know that some um, housing authorities, other housing authorities that I know, are very reluctant to accept critical comments. They take it personally and they get upset. Whereas I think if here you're managing to hear the comments for what they're worth as attempts to be helpful, um, then I think you'll all be happier uh, and just more constructive. Um, I will say that, and, and Edwin, I don't mean to be critical of you, but in general, when tenants have problems, um, they may, may deserve and need help. And I think it's up to other tenants to reach out as you have, or for management or um, service coordinators to find the resources because people deserve the right to live in the community, um, but they also need to conform to some of the expectations and standards in the community. And it's, it's better if a professional is brought in to deal with that kind of thing. Um, and I I hope you don't take it as, as critical. I just think I've seen this and can get out of hand. And it's really better um, not to put the person on the spot publicly and not to try to, even with goodwill, ask them to be moved out because that's really a function of management. Um, and the first step, and I'm sure management knows this, is uh, try to find out what the problem is and bring in the resources and try to deal with it if, if at all possible. Um, I, I hope you take that, hope everybody can take that as positive comments on what I see as a very constructive meeting. Um, I'm going to have to leave, but 
those are my observations and, and I hope that's useful. So all the best. Thank, Thank you, you so for... much, Mr. Halberstadt, for coming all the way from Peabody. We really, uh, we're really glad to see you every time. And I'm sorry, Edwin, we can't um, do a back and forth right now. I really apologize. The, elect the electrons make it easy for me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it, Chair, it looks like that's everyone accounted for. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, and again, we do really value public comment, meaning resident, staff, and public. We've been working on uh, uh, fixing that in our bylaws um, because m many, we, that has been something pointed out to us in terms of lumping those together because as has been mentioned, we are all members of the public. And so um, more to come on that. I don't know, and you said that that's it for the comment, right? So I do again want to thank everybody. Thank you so much for coming, for keeping us informed. You will hear back from management for any particular concerns. And um, and then at the next meeting, as is our practice in the executive director's report, there's kind of a tally about the concerns that you've heard and how they may have been dealt with. Okay, so our next item on the agenda will be the executive director's report. Welcome back, Director Leeper. Sarah, you're muted. You're muted. She's gone. Sorry about that. And thank you for um, having me back. I appreciate that. Um, I had muted myself so that you wouldn't hear barking dog. So I appreciate that. Um, Executive Director's Monthly Summary for July 2024. Um, our GPR was 225,619.95, of which collected 205,879.28, which is 91%. Um, our annual recertifications for the current month for public housing was 78, and Section 8 was 62. Um, we recertified 70 public housing and 60 Section 8. Um, leaving 14 in public housing and uh, eight in Section 8 due to outstanding paperwork um, that we're waiting on from either residents or third-party verifications. Um, our wait lists for federal applicants, one bedroom is 96, two bedroom is 34, three bedroom is 23, four bedroom is two, and Section 8 has 58. Our state applicants, family has 22,158. Our elderly... Sorry, our elderly disabled wait list is 56,677. 56, I apologize. Uh, move outs, we had public housing had 11, Section 8 had three. Move ins, we had seven in public housing, Section 8 had two. Public housing had uh, two on notice. End of month vacant ready were four, vacant unready were 16 for a total of 20 vacant. 10 of which are pre-leased and we're processing six lists in the CHAMP, uh, the state CHAMP website. Uh, we completed uh, seven make readies, five of which were complete rehabs. We took in 252 work orders. Uh, we started the month with 40. Uh, we completed 234 work orders, leaving 58 incomplete. Um, we had uh, updates and events. The Summer Eats program, which is coordinated with the Northampton Public Schools began on July 1st and is scheduled to run through August 8th. Uh, lunch is scheduled Monday through Thursday with Hampshire Heights being from 12 to 12.30 and Florence Heights being from 1 to 1.30. All children 18 and under are welcome to join us at the community room during the, the scheduled timeframes to enjoy nutritious meals, whether they live within the community, housing community, of, housing authority community or not. The Northampton Public Health Department continues to visit our uh, senior housing sites on a rotating basis every Wednesday at 11. Their team is at one of our senior sites providing education and blood pressure checks. Uh, residents can find the schedule on, in our monthly newsletter. We continue to work with Mass Save on cooling at the Savile House for the community room and all of the common hallways. Uh, due to the pending roofing project, the architect has been incorporating the scope of work. We are awaiting official approval from Mass Save, but have received, but originally had received verbal approval. The project is anticipated to go out to bid in September. At this time, all residents have cooling in their individual units based on the past year's mini split project. 
residents had uh, previously stated that the hallways had air conditioning, but what had previously been done was the fire department would allow us to occasionally turn on the vent fanning for the fire, um, which is an exhaust for the fire department. Um, it's not allowed to be on all the time. Uh, however, they would allow us to kind of clear the building out, um, but we do have to have special permission for that. Uh, and so ends the executive director report for July of 2024. Back to you, uh, Chairperson Carney. Thank you, Director Leeper. Um, and as is our practice, if anyone has any questions for the director, they may reach out to Director Leeper. Uh, same goes for commissioners oh, no, and your residents. And no, there is no, I'm no sorry. Point order, no point no, of order. I, what's the point of order? Um, I just said, asked that the executive director report be emailed to me and I didn't get it this month. Okay, well, I don't think that that's a point of order. I think that you might want to take that up directly with the director and ask. Is it a point of information? Just, no, it's neither. It's neither, as you know, the director just got back today after many weeks. So it seems it might've gotten lost in the shuffle. Thank you. So that, I don't know. I think it's a gripe and you can take it up after the meeting. No, it wasn't a gripe. I was just asking. Thank you. Okay. So where was I, Commissioner Tarbin? Well, okay, let me go. Let me where go were you where, when? When I was uh, just interrupted. You were in- yes. I was at the next item. So <laughs> And I think I was letting people know that if they have a question or concern about the executive director's report, as I said, they may reach out to Director Leeper. Is that understood? Okay, good. Next item of business is our approval of the June regular meeting minutes. And before I actually ask for a motion to put that approval on the floor, I do want to explain to the public a uh, couple of things. Um, you may have noticed, it's certainly been noticed by me and members of the, of the board, that our discussion, our taking up of the agenda item of, which is typically a very pro forma item, meeting minutes were taken and then they're passed before the board for approval. However, <clears throat> there has been a lot of discussion in the last six months. I've gone back and there have been month after month after month. And so <clears throat> I apologize. I apologize to the public, to the residents, that I have not done my job to the extent that I is my job, which is to moderate this meeting in such a way that it is manageable. You should know that in terms of meeting minutes, there are only three things, additions, corrections, or deletions. And I'm actually gonna show you here, if I might, uh, let me go back to Zoom to share my screen here. So, and I'm saying this for public edification so that folks understand what I mean, because it's the reason I'm apologizing is I think that folks may not understand what I mean. So when I'm asking commissioners for additions, corrections, or deletions, an addition is something that was in the video recording and the Zoom transcript, but it's not in the draft minutes. But a person might think it rises to the importance of being added to the official minutes. Of course, we don't want any of the ums, or hums, any things from the recording or even the written transcript. We can't include anything like, I meant to say this or, I forgot to say that. So th that's, a new, that's what we ask for when we ask for additions. Something that was in the recording, didn't make it into the minutes, the official minutes, and we think they should. A correction are typically what we call Scrivener's errors. Those are typos, a misspelling of someone's name even. Anything that's in the transcript already, but incorrectly transcribed into the draft minutes that we're, we're about to approve. And a deletion is something that it didn't appear in the video or the Zoom transcript, but somehow inadvertently appeared in the draft minutes. And we've had that happen. For example, um, if from the template that we use, something might not have been deleted from the template and then it ended up in the official minutes, but it wasn't actually from the previous meeting. That's a deletion. 
So the reason I bring that up is that that is my practice is to limit our discussion to those three areas, additions, corrections, or deletions. I will say that there's a lot of work that is involved in the creation of the official minutes for this meeting. We may have a two hour meeting and then we have a staff person who's done our minutes for years and years, many, many years, who then listens for six hours because you can't just listen. You have to stop, listen, transcribe, then put in. It's a lot of work. And unfortunately, what's happened in a lot of the discussion that was not limited to additions, corrections, or deletions is that there have been critical, even derogatory and um, inappropriate comments regarding the taking of the minutes. And there's even been a suggestion, not only by those of us who are all, the only ones who could talk about it, meaning those of us on the board, but even it's even come into public comment suggestions that there should be a quote unquote, impartial stenographer to take the minutes. Now I take issue with that because I hear it is actually a criticism of the person who's been doing our minutes for many, many years that that person is partial, is biased. And so I will not have any discussion of our meeting minutes from here on in, except to allow for the offering of an addition, correction, or deletion, at which point the minutes can then be, um, that gets changed to being approval of the minutes as corrected. So, what I've asked commissioners to do is to submit in writing their addition, correction, or deletion by 3.30 on the day of the meeting, and then we can take it up. This is not, this is, this is uh, the obligation of the chair, which is why I've apologized to the public and to other members of the um, board. And I do not intend to have any comment about this or discussion or debate. And so I will say to anyone who wishes to, they may use time at their resident comment or public comment at the next meeting, they may use that time because their speech is not limited. Speech is not limited full First Amendment rights to do and say or denigrate or complain as much as one wishes. That's what the Supreme Court has told us. But I will not allow it in the context of our board meeting. And so that being said, I have not received any additions, corrections, or deletions for the meeting minutes for tonight. And so I'm going to ask if there's a motion to approve from the floor. Motion to approve. Made by Commissioner Brooks. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. And so I will ask then the the secretary to call the roll. I do have a question about it, maybe an addition. Do I not get that option? No, I'm sorry. I, I was very clear in the email. I know, I know you said that, but I, when it said Monday at 3.30, it didn't have the date, so I didn't know that. And thank I'm you for sorry. being fair. You're welcome. Would the secretary please call the roll? Certainly. Approval of the June 2024 regular meeting minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chair, thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. No. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. I, I'm sorry. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton, and thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Madam Chair, one, two, three, four, five yeas and one nay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, you're muted. Uh, you're, now you're I'm muted. not. You're muted. Uh, thank you, and that motion does carry. It moves us into unfinished business, another set of minutes. And again, because this has gone on for a number of months, this set of minutes ended up being pushed back because um, 
um, there was some dispute about uh, uh, the the uh, approval of the minutes. And so it's under unfinished business. And these are those of March 2024. I did not receive any additions, corrections, or deletions for these. And so at this point, I'll ask if there's a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Welcome. Commissioner Brooks and Commissioner Richards seconded. Yes. Thank you. So I'll ask then the secretary to please call the roll. Yes, this is a motion for approval of the March 2024 regular meeting minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. No. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that motion carries. Thank you, everyone. And that brings us to another item. It's listed as discussion, but as you all recall at our last meeting, we were told by EOHLC that until our accepted use of procedures are resolved, we dealt with all this at the last meeting, they advised us to keep this as a standing agenda item, but only if we need to discuss something that has some further action taken by the state. We have not had any further action. They have received our agreed upon procedures as we voted at the last meeting. So I'm going to say that, I'll just announce that this agenda item will appear again at the August meeting, at which point if there is some update or something to report, then we'll have that to discuss. Which brings us now right to new business. And what we have in new business is- Hold on, Amber Mace, could you repeat the very last thing that you said? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite understand. Where did I leave off that you started to forget? Because I don't know what it is that you want me to repeat. Okay. The part, the part in the end when you said, uh, just, just repeat it, repeat it all together, just uh, particularly in the last two sentences. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes. So we were told that the, we received information from the state that we should keep this as an agenda item until, as they called it, the issue is resolved, meaning they've they've evaluated and gone through whatever they need to do with our agreed upon procedures that we submitted. They asked us to keep this as a regular agenda item until that time, okay. however, but that there would be, if there was nothing to report, then there would be nothing to discuss. There is nothing to report, there is nothing to discuss, and they'll keep this as an agenda item for the next meeting. There's nothing to report since we voted at the last meeting to submit the agreed upon procedures. There's nothing to report since then. They're working on it. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying. I assume we're all in a clear then? Is that what you're saying? Or is just not the status of what's going on is nothing to report on? And I thank you for taking the time to explain and clarify. Yeah. You are yes. Again, what they said was because where's our agreed upon procedures is in a stack like this. They get a stack of all of them from the different ones from the different housing authorities. When they get to ours, they'll review it. They've let us know that it's been received. When they get to it, they'll let us know. At which point, that will be something that will they'll give a response to us. At that point, it'll be something that'll appear as the regular, they asked us to keep this as a regular standing agenda item until such point as they get to it and it's resolved. So in the meantime, are we still in the strike one phase? Pardon me, uh, Maureen, yeah. um, if I may, it wasn't Northampton that was in the strike one phase. It was the Hampshire County Regional Housing Authority part that was in the strike one phase. Um, and so um, really it's uh, it's that they've received our report and uh, they've received our response. And um, okay, Jack is saying Northampton. Um, so okay. I misspoke. Yeah, and uh, let me, I let me because I was there too, um, Director Leeper. As I understand it, and I spoke at length with, with the Carolina from EOHLC, okay. as I understood it, strike one was until the point that we submit what we submitted after we voted last month. So we are no longer in strike one because we submitted. 
we're in limbo, I think, until they actually get it from under the pile of all of the other agreed upon procedures submitted by the however many housing authorities across the state. And what they do is they ask the housing authorities to just keep this item on the agenda until they get back to us. Yes. So we're waiting for them to get back to us with what they received from us. Okay. At which point, they'll let us know. We can discuss. It will be resolved. We won't have it on the agenda anymore. So yes. we have the staff and absences to do all that from last meeting. So you're saying that that is something that's been submitted and submitted uh, correctly, and we're just waiting for them to say yay or nay, all is theirs. Yes. Thanks for clarifying. That's what we're here for. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, where was I? I'm sorry. Do you remember? I don't know. We're on new I mean, business. I, 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 have, I usually have it there. I'm ready to go on, but I know I was just asked about some more information. Yeah. So. No, we're on, we're on new business. Oh, okay, so now we're under uh, new business now, which is a motion to accept the low bidder. My screen gets a little screwed up. In fact, I'm going to ask the director to uh, read this motion, and then I'll ask if there is a motion from the floor for approval. Director? Yes, um, Madam Chair. Um, we went out to bid, um, and uh, this was in regards to um, construction for new window replacements at Hampshire Heights. Um, and uh, the low bidder was NENA Construction, incorporated in the amount of $807,000 for EOHLC fish number 214126. Um, the sealed bids um, on double hung uh, casement and combination windows uh, failed in approximately 20% of the windows and the existing uh, vinyl windows have reached the end of their useful life. Complete window replacement uh, would be required with new energy efficient vinyl windows in the existing window openings. A total of five bids were received. Tobias Berkner, designer at Clark Green, verified references for the low bidder NENA construction out of Warwick, Rhode Island, which, is, uh, which were highly positive and there were no reports of negative uh, experiences. Uh, this would cover 10 of the 19 buildings. We believe the worst of the buildings are buildings 6, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, and 19. Um, the base bid $635,000 and an alternate uh, alternative number one building number five brings the total to 707,000. And then alternative number two is building two, which uh, would bring the total to $807,000 with a total budget of 890,000. Um, therefore, we would be asking the board to accept both alternatives just in case, so we wouldn't bring it forward. Um, NENA construction um, came in um, uh, as low bidder. Uh, there were, uh, the the diversified came in with a base of 736. Um, Aegean builders came in with a base of 773. Uh, La Roche came in at a base of 857, and uh, Drizzo's contracting came in at, with a base of a million one twenty four three twenty two. And so, therefore, I asked the bid to uh, the board to accept the low bidder of NENA construction to start the phase one of uh, window replacement of ha at Hampshire Heights in the amount of eight hundred and seven thousand uh, dollars for EOHLC fish number two one four one two six Hampshire Heights window replacement. Thank you, Director Lieber, and I'll ask the board for purposes of discussion. May we please have a motion to approve so that we can put it on the floor? Motion I to think, approve. Okay, moved by Commissioner Richards. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded, seconded by Commissioner Brooks. And now it's open for discussion. I'm looking for, I gotta change my view to see the hands. Oh, Commissioner Tarbon. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I would just like to say um, I appreciate the fact that we got the bidder information on the bidder. Let me find my notes here. And I thought that that was helpful. 
I did look up. I, I wish that I would have gotten information on these other bidders too. Uh, you know, this is like we've chosen this bidder. I, I would like to get an idea of the other bidders. So thank you for uh, at least presenting why we went with the quote unquote lowest bidder. My, um, I, I, I tried to in the uh, time that I had when I got this information is to look up this information. Uh, I noticed that in February, this group had done some work. I could say the name wrong, Cohasset Housing Authority. They did some work with them in February. So I wanted to see how they are. I did look up the Better Business Bureau and I don't know because they're out of Rhode Island. Maybe that's why we didn't get anything in the Massachusetts Board of um, I mean, Better Business Bureau. I do see, and it's very helpful, that we did get the information from the uh, housing um, uh, EOHLC, or the governor's office, all that, talked about the prime cert uh, certificate of contractor eligibility. I just remember when uh, we went to the conference, you could see all those vendors around. I would go around and talk to them about a variety of things. Of course, most of the stuff I don't know anything about. But I was surprised that we got one and we didn't get information from the other bidder. And I also have to tell you, when I saw the 800, I mean, that's that's more than three fourths of a million dollars. So when I saw that, I actually thought it included the basement in Hampshire Heights, just the windows. Uh, granted, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not mechanically inclined and I don't know how it is. And I don't think I've ever visited inside an apartment in, 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 in Hampshire to know what it's like. I assume that we're doing it for the betterment of all the residents and children that are there. But I really thought, I wasn't sure which went first and whatever, I thought they were sorted together. And I was concerned also with this particular bidder because in 220, they had a different name, trying to find a different name. So I apologize. I spent most of my information trying to find this out and I didn't realize that the Monday meant this July Monday from the uh, board meeting. But let me, um, yeah, I was, uh, oh, oh, here it is, Nina Construction. Yeah. Um, so I was a little uh, concerned. Why? Because, you know, you're always thinking about when people, when they're doing business, not that this is the case, that sometimes when people change their names a lot, you kind of be a little leery. Oh, it's not a red flag, but it's a pink flag. So um, I, on one level, I'm very happy that we're doing this. And I, I've always thought we should have done it all along. But in the uh, interest of transparency, I'm glad that we're doing it. But I would have liked some information on the other bidders. So I can look into that too, as opposed to just coming in and rubber stamping something. And so that's what I do everywhere. And if that's a problem for folks, <laughs> we're supposed to be doing it. I'm just taking yet another uh, a, a workshop with the Office of Inspector General when they're talking about procurement and fraud word and all of this kind of stuff. We're all supposed to be doing that. And uh, I get a little, I feel a little censored that asking any questions, people find it as a front. And that's not, that's not what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner so, um, And before Adam, I go back, before I go back to Carol Leeper, <laughs> Director Leeper, as I as because this seems to work well, and I know that Director Leeper has taken note of each of the concerns and questions uh, asked by Commissioner Tarbun. I'll ask other other concerns or questions from members of the board, so that Director Leeper may address them all when when she when she hears them. Are there any other concerns or questions besides those raised by Commissioner Tarbutton? I see Commissioner Cancel getting ready to ask something, maybe at least unmuting. Commissioner, yes, thank you. Um, I don't have a question or concern, just a comment. Um, uh, having lived in Hampshire Heights, uh, of course, I get really excited anytime you know, you know, we have something um, uh, get improved at Hampshire Heights. Um, but I, I just I I do also have the basement in the back of my mind all the time. Um, but I am happy that um, uh, we're getting the windows done, which which really needed. So that's all. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. I see that Commissioner Richards also has a question. Um, yes, thank you. I just wanted to say I'm I'm echo uh, Commissioner Cancel's. I'm very happy to get this um, done. Do uh, what responsibility um, do we have to take the lowest bidder? And before, so, before I go back to D Director Leeper, I think that Commissioner Tarbutton has another question. Her hand is still raised. You're all done with your questions, Commissioner? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, uh, and Commissioner Tarbutton, did you have further questions? For now, I'm done. Thanks.
Oh, uh, Commissioner Brooks or Commissioner Jones, do you have any questions or concerns? No, I don't. Okay, the one that I would have would also ask you to address after you've heard all of those from the from the commissioners is <clears throat> I know that um, in our pro procurement policy for the city, we do a couple of things besides our obligation to take the lowest bid, which is an obligation as far as I understand it. Um, we also have a, um, and this is something we worked on at the city council level, which is to make sure that any employer, any contractor is also um, um, not, not, not guilty of uh, OSHA complaints or wage theft or anything like that. And I don't know whether that's kind of filtered down here in terms of, we actually have a form at the, at the city level where any contractor engaged by the city will certify that they are in compliance with wage law. And in this case here, because it's public housing, it would be prevailing wage. They, we can't require that it be union or whatever, which used to be the case, but they do need to pay prevailing wage, especially for an item for this, for this much money, but also that there not be outstanding OSHA complaints or anything like that. If you have that information and you may not, and finally, yes, I think Commissioner Tarbutton has come up with the other question. Uh, no, I just want to echo what you're saying. I do uh, appreciate you mentioning that. Those are things that are of interest, and uh, it would have been really helpful uh, to see that. It's not, there's a thing that I learned in one of the trainings. It said, trust, but verify. It's not that I'm saying that this person or this group of people are not. I appreciate all the certificate and all the work that went in there, but I would just like to see other things, too, to make a informed decision. So, um I do appreciate that. And if they, if you get that information, I appreciate it being um, forwarded to me. It'd be helpful. And I'm again, I'm also always excited when something's happening for the betterment of the tenants. I think that's great, but I don't know why I thought the issues of the um, basement flooding would be included in that. That's a lot of money. So I think I have it I kind of summarized myself. And that seems to be questions regarding the relationship of this project, the window installation, to the, what's been a persistent problem regarding the water in the basements and flooding, if that could be addressed by the director. In addition to that, there was question regarding our requirement, our legal requirement to accept the lowest bid. And, okay. you know, how, and yeah. then one more, and, and whether, if and whether at all, we do, um, follow along or have a policy to follow along what has been the city of Northampton's policy, which is to make sure that it is, it was part, it was based on our responsible employer ordinance. So now I don't see any other questions and I think you have that list. There you go. Okay. So um, I think it's great, um, Commissioner Tarbutton, that you're going through the procurement stuff. Um, the thing, the part of what needs to be kept in mind is uh, when the item is over $100,000 and it's a state project, um, EOHLC takes the lead. So what that means is, um, and this is one of those projects, um, the fish number then um, they take all of it. So they they do all they they do all the advertising, they take all the bids in, they take all the documents in, they hire an architect, a designer, all that stuff. And then they give us only what we need to see or what we need to present to the board. So, for example, in this instance, what we needed to see were we needed to print out all the bid, uh, you know, all the the five bids which we sent to you guys, the low bidder, um, if when this architect designer had done the reference checks on the low bidder, if they had come back not so great, then they would have gone to the next low bidder and done reference checks on them. And then we would have presented that to you guys and said, uh, reference checks didn't come back so great on the low bidder. Um, so we went with the next lowest bidder. But when the project is under $100,000, the housing authority is then responsible for doing all those different tasks. Um, and so 
the projects that we have going on right now, the Hampshire Heights basements, the Hampshire Heights windows, the Hampshire Heights water mitigation and the Hampshire Heights um, repaving, the Salvo roof, you know, all these different things that we have going on are all very, very expensive projects that are over half a million, over a million, et cetera. So the majority of the things that you get from us are going to be projects that HLC is technically doing all the management of the projects. So we're just pushing the paperwork and bringing it to you for, um, for approval. So um, for uh, Ed, Edgardo, for you, just know that those that basement, that water mitigation, that parking lot, and the windows were all at certain different phases of all of those projects. This one just happened to go through faster than any of other. Um, and of the 19 buildings, we're doing 10. Water mitigation, basement, and the others, you know, we're still working on, a, you know, we're at different phases of those as well. Uh, Marilyn, for you, uh, your question, I believe, was uh, I, I kind of I think I answered it with the at the hundred thousand mark is you know where it trips to be the state handling it versus us handling it, um, and um, I think that kind of answered um, Commissioner Tarbutton's uh, question. If I didn't, please let me know, and and I'm I'm happy to give that uh, little thing, and and if there's if the project is under 10,000, there's different uh, different um, rules as well. And um, Commissioner Tarbutton, I'm, I'm really more than happy to also um, even kind of go over with you our policies on that whole process on procurement because we have state and federal and then if it's over this amount, if it's under that amount, and, and I'm happy to you know, show you with that because, hey, more eyes are better than less eyes too. Um, and I know you like to learn and, you know, um, and, and it's an interesting process with this all, all this stuff too. So let me know if you'd like to uh, sit, sit down at some point when you have time. Um, I'm happy to go over that once you go through that procurement class, because that's an interesting class too. Could I ask you to clarify? Um, could I ask you to clarify one thing, Director? Sure, sure. I don't know if I got everybody's question. I hope you, I did. I, you did. You did. I just need one further. I, I just think it needs to be yep. uh, driven home. Yep. We don't really get to decide. It's really the state that tells us that based yeah. on their work and evaluating and reaching out and advertising and everything... Yeah. They have chosen this as the lowest bidder. Yep. They're presenting us the names of the others that we could only consider if the lowest bidder came back with poor references. Am I correct? Yes. If we can, if I brought this to you, uh, let's say I brought this to you and, um, you know, you know, knew of something that, you know, Tobias Berkner didn't, you know, I could go back to them and say, well, we have this concern that would then trip this designer to then do further investigation. But there'd have to be some kind of really bad thing because they've already done all the references. They've already called all the, you know, they've checked the Better Business Bureau. They've checked all of that. And they're saying, we've done the background checks. They've passed. And this is who we're picking based on all the work that we did. And these so, are- uh, One other thing, because the, the term rubber stamp has been brought up. It's not really a rubber stamp per se, but it's basically they're not the state doesn't give us a lot of leeway at all over a hundred thousand. Over a hundred thousand, they're saying um, over a hundred thousand. So the state has a law based on procurement, um, and and that's whether even if it's you know one penny versus you know one million dollars. The state laws around procurement apply no matter what it is. So HLC and, and feds, you know, they they both they both have their own set of, of rules, but HLC specifically, so all the state properties, they have a construction department and they recognize that housing authorities have an awful lot to do. And so they help us in saying that if you're a larger housing authority, which we are, um, uh, if you have projects that are over a hundred thousand dollars, we will handle them in our construction department. Therefore, we'll do all the bidding, all the advertising, all the this, all the that. 
which helps us tremendously because then for us to do all of that and track all of it is just really, truly a nightmare. It's basically the DCAM. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, state's yeah. DCAM. Uh, uh, in construction, what, we deal with this all the time, yes. The, the smaller housing authorities um, are given what's called RCAT, which is a, you know, it's like, it's like a DCAM, but for smaller housing authorities uh, to be able to help them handle it. Because really, it's too much for a housing authority to be able to handle everything that they do, plus be able to do construction. It's just not something they're meant to do. Uh, for somebody like Jack, Sharon, and I, who have been in this business for almost 40 years, we certainly can handle it. Um, but a housing authority shouldn't really have to handle this ginormous amount of a, of a construction project. It's just, it's a lot of work. And so we're thankful that they recognize this and that they do all of this work for us. I would just venture to say that it's not just out of consideration for us and the work that we do and the amount of work that would call. But, and I apologize for using the acronym. So the Division of Capital Asset Management, DCAM, mm -hmm. is responsible is responsible and takes that responsibility very seriously. And so that's why they do this for any projects over 100,000 that have any state funds, not just housing authorities, but you'll notice uh, if a university, the un everything goes through DCAM. I know that Commissioner Tarbutton has a follow-up question as does Commissioner Cancel. Commissioner Tarbutton. I'll defer to uh, Commissioner Cancel. Commissioner Cancel, please. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just had a, a question regarding the, uh, 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 for Kara, uh, when EOHLC makes their determination, do you know if they include the wage draft, uh, wage, uh, wage theft and prevailing wage, like home rule? They, from North yeah, so, so what they do is, is um, uh, we, so we all have access to this, um, to this cap hub, it's, it's called the cap hub. Um, and we, I, when I say we all, meaning I have access to it, um, Jack has access to it, um, and our the construction team at HLC has access to it. Um, and so, you know, we kind of all put documents in there um, as it's going. And so um, we might request an hour and wage, um, you know, uh, for a project. And so then the state will give us this wage report and it's uploaded into this document. And so that makes sure that prevailing wage is being paid for the job that's being done. And it's all it's all on the up and up. And so always that is taken into consideration in all the jobs that we do. The home rule. And that's whether HLC is running the show for it or whether we're running the show for it. The home rule that applies to this agency really had to do with the makeup of the board. It doesn't, Our home, the home rule does not take in our, our, our little city of Northampton's requirements for the city of Northampton's contractors, which are the responsible employer ordinance that I sponsored back as a city councilor. But that also, that required that, um, and I don't know that the state has something similar on at their level. If it doesn't, I don't think that they would accept our objection to the, to taking the <clears throat> the lowest bidder because it falls all within the state laws. However, um, that's something that we could find out. They have asked us and basically we don't have much leeway. We either take the lower bit, the lowest bidder or there could be, a, and it's not just references. So for example, if there were, if we found out when we did some research on this Warwick, Rhode Island contractor, that they were listed in the OSHA database as having had outstanding safety and health uh, charges and concerns, that might be something that would go back to them. However, I think it's highly unusual that any, um, because I think we're the only city in the state of Massachusetts that has such an has an has an ordinance that we passed back then. And I think it was just to make because, you know, in the city of Northampton, we wanted to make sure first of all, well, wage doesn't matter because it's prevailing wage is the is the law. So that is determined. Prevailing wage is it's not actually the union wage, but typically it is based on Area. that. So um yeah, I, I think Commissioner Brooks might have a little something to say here before I go back. Nope. 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 Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. So and and did, did I, did I answer, address your question? Oh, oh, go oh, commissioner. And to answer uh, Edgar's yes, question please, to you, thank and I you. think jo Joella's as well. I, I just want to remind everyone that don't forget this is, I mean, 
yes, it's our money, but really it's not our money. This, this money is money that the state is giving us. We're saying, uh, we're saying that, um, you know, your windows are, we're saying over our five-year capital plan, these things are really in need of help, you know, our water, our windows, our basements, and they're saying, okay, you know, here's a percentage of money that, that you can use to fix these things. This is their money. So really for, for them to say, you have to choose the low bidder, this is who we want you to use. It's not our money to say yay or nay or rubber stamp it. It's them saying, okay, it's our money. This is who we're going to go with. And you guys are just saying whether you're going to let them use their money to do the project we've, we've said needs to be done. Which begs the question, what if we chose to um, not approve this motion? Would we just not get the? We would, they basically take back. They just say, "Okay, bye bye." You know, you know. Well, you'd have a PMR finding because you wouldn't be within your percentage rate of the um, of the uh, capital spending. So that's a PMR finding. You'd have a PMR finding. Um, I I think you'd have another PMR finding um, for not spending the money too. Um, I don't know. Uh, hold on. I just got a message in Teams. Um, just a good question because we never know. I mean, this is the makeup of our board now. In you know, five years, it could be very different and it could be folks who just don't want to accept those terms by the state. And it would be helpful to know what that means. And I think you're suggesting it would be some PMR yeah, be project issue. management review. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would it would it would be an issue. Okay. Commissioner Charbutton, please. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. I like the information um that was that went into this that uh uh ED Leeper spoke of. If you could email me that, that would be really helpful. Uh I the only reason that I'm asking for that, whether or not we're included in this, doesn't mean I'm not interested in it. I think this stuff is fascinating and I am I know I haven't been a part of any of this procurement it's just been like done and told and so when I say rubber stamp I just like to know so I don't apologize for that and if people have a problem with that I'm sorry that people have that problem but I guess one of the things that I had mentioned when I saw this information and I do appreciate getting the packet and everything uh, the information came from Clark Green Architectural Design, and it said that, you know, they commu uh, communicated with three individuals, the direct exper experience with ne uh, Nina Construction, and it was two uh, EOHLC and Northampton. So, you know, it communicated and it says we've had positive things, da 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 da, -da. But when I looked it up, I also saw, as I told you, am I saying the name wrong, Cohasset? And it doesn't look like that was a part of it. And just... You know, my mind is thinking who, when was the most recent uh, recent one? And I would be interested, I would be interested in what they have to say and even Cohasset, but I just looked on their, um, their, their uh, many, many uh, minutes, meeting minutes to get an idea. But uh, I think that uh, having people, whether for whatever amount, I mean, that amount of money now, I mean, it's just like a, that's a lot of money that we need to be held accountable for, for for every penny. And I do appreciate that I did get some idea about what's over 100,000, what's 5,000, but, um, and who needs to look into that. But I am interested. I don't know about anyone else because I think this is a part of my job. It does include procurement. And that's why I've been uh, on my own initiating and paying for training to understand it. Whether or not I, um, it is not my job, I'm not getting paid for that, but it's just something of interest because we are, you know, we are responsible for a lot. Part of our job is responsible for this stuff and tenant. So all of that. So, but I would have been really interested in uh, Cohasset Housing Authority. What would their experience um, with this company? And uh, when was this happening? Uh, I don't, I don't have anything from the Cohasset Housing Authority. I know, they that's what I... Levere, no, I, I, and Dartmouth. Uh, 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 no. Director Leeper, Director, hold on what? one sec. The commissioner is just stating her opinion. She's not oh, asking oh, oh, any okay. questions. She's not asking any other questions. I'm confused on what she's, she'd asked me for some documents and I don't know what oh, I'm being what, asked. No, you just said, oh, we do this, we learn this, we do this. It's over a hundred thousand. 
Uh, I was just saying, in addition to having to meet, can you provide this information for me? And I, what I get worried is that is I'm the only one that's interested in this. I don't know who else, but this is the kind of stuff, because right now we're taking time to go over this. And I appreciate people not rolling their eyes that I'm asking for this, taking the time to clarify. I think that's helpful to all. But if this is something we all could know, um, and I don't know who all signed up for the uh, July uh, uh, Office of Inspector General, uh, the uh, procurement. I used to send stuff out to folks, but it seemed like I was the one going to it. And I'm not doing that. I think everybody's probably already been through it because, uh, Chair, you gave me some clarification on what the city used to do. Um, but I think that these are the things that are there. And it gives me an idea when I'm in these classes, the questions that I can ask. It gives me a broader um, you know, perspective. And the only reason why I said that I didn't have a chance to go through this. I just uh, saw the one with Cohasset that was online right along the same time with the um, the fact that the Better Business Bureau, and I thought Better Business Bureau was all over, not just particular uh, states. And this is from Rhode Island. So it was just a curiosity. And, you know, I think that this has been clarifying. I Because I still have some questions, I'll abstain from this. But I think that this is great. We're on a great start. And I think this is something that we should have been doing all alone, all the time. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutt. And I hope we don't all abstain because then we could be up the creek regarding this um, project. I will state for the record that I'm very interested in this just because it's been I've been working in this field for nearly 40 years regarding construction and DCAM and the state regulations. And I know that other people are too. So you can be assured that we all find this interesting. And what we want to do is be able to um, approve or reject the motion. So typically when we have debate and when we have discussion, it's, it's, it's really with each other. Do we want to convince our colleagues on the board to approve or reject or abstain from this motion? And so, as I said, I hope everyone doesn't abstain or doesn't object. But, and I would I would encourage folks to go ahead and approve, and that's because I want to see some forward motion on this project. So are there any other? Yes. Oh, Commissioner, again. Yes, please. I see your hand raised, Commissioner Trabot. Oh, yeah, I'm just a little confused with the previous statement. I think we all come to our conclusions and not saying that you're trying to do this, but I never ask you why you say yes and why you vote for this and why. I don't know if that's not saying I'm that not you asking you why. I'm not asking you why. But I'm not finished, please. But I'm just saying when I hear that, I do agree with that. But we also have to vote with our conscience and what we and the information that we have. So I, I, I'm trying to take that in the spirit of us working together. But I also because of I feel being censored on other stuff that I need some clarification for. It's in that let's all do this. This could happen. It's gonna go through. If it was tight, tight one, you know, whatever, and it may not go through, then I would think differently. But I would like to have all the information and maybe not all will ever happen before I make a conscious decision. It is that important to me. And I'm basing this, and I just told you, I appreciate all that we have. Whether I abstain isn't gonna make it not pass. So I don't know, it just feels like a little lecture and try, not that you, you said you weren't doing this, so I'll take you at your word, but I would respect people's perspective without having to, how, not hound them, but try to make them th think differently on their perspective. So I do appreciate the ability to be able to make my own decisions. Thank you. Understood. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. I will again speak finally to encourage my colleagues on the board to approve this motion so that we can move forward with the numerous projects we have at Hampshire Heights. And seeing no other hands, I'll go ahead, please, and ask the secretary to call the roll. Yes, this motion is to accept the low bidder presented by EOHLC for Nina Construction Inc. in the amount of $807,000 for fish number 214126, Hampshire Heights window replacements. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Richards. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. I stated all of sports. Commissioner Cancel. Yes, go Hampshire Heights. 
Three of us is on barking. One, two, three, four, five yeses and one abstention. Two, that passes. Thank goodness. Okay, and I think that might bring us to the end. And and I'm looking, and it looks like not record time, but I think that we've settled all of our business tonight for the Northampton Housing Authority in an hour and 40 minutes. So I appreciate everybody coming, your hard work and looking at all this material and your patience, especially all the residents and members of the public. Um, hope to see you again in August and stay cool. Oh, wait a minute. We need one final motion. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, I think you can just yell yay or a i and then we're done. Thank you, everybody.